There's more than one way to skin a cat or fix it if it happens to be a Jaguar. We're going to talk Jacksonville today with Tony Wiggins. Welcome to Locked On NFL Draft. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Show. I am your host, former NFL and NFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined by my guy, my co-host, Ryan Tracy. And we want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today, we've got a special guest coming on, the host of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I hope I said that right. I've been throwing, I've been messing up the Jaguars name. All right, but what? We got the host of the Jags, the Jags coming on, Tony Wiggins, right now. So with no further ado, Tony, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for coming on. What's going on, man? And you got it right. You know, it took a long time for people around here to stop saying Jack Wires. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I saw you. I actually watched your show yesterday and you were going through that. So uh, the other day when yeah. you talk about the Jaguar, I'm like, man, just let it roll off your tongue. Jaguar. That's it. Jaguars, and we've been talking it. about the Jaguars <laughs> quite quite a bit lately. I'm pretty sure a lot of our listeners are like, why do we keep talking about the Jags? But now we're going through in order, really just through the draft, and we'll throw some other teams in there that may, maybe don't have first-round picks, like my 49ers, but we can get to them anytime. But, of course, we're starting with the team that has the number one overall pick, and we're going to get into the draft. But before that, we just want, kind of want to talk about the state of the Jaguars and where they're at right now. And I, I think we got to start with the quarterback. Trevor Lawrence drafted number one overall. He, he's the guy that's the, you know, he's the like the best prospect since Andrew Luck. That's what everyone says. Is that what you are seeing on field? And is he everything that you guys hoped he would be coming into the NFL? Uh, no, but oh. it's not a it's not a bad thing because uh first of all, folks were saying that he has this Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers arm. That's not true, does not. But he has a really good arm. He has a Peyton Manning, a little bit, you know, the Peyton Manning arm, the Joe Montana arm, the Joe Burrow. He's he's probably uh, better than Joe Burrow, maybe not quite Justin Herbert. You know, you don't look at him and think he has this hose, but you do look at a guy, you say, God, he dropped that in there. And there's nothing, you, you, you're not going to get to a situation where he can't make a throw. So while... The thing about him was always the fact that he had these intangibles and he was a winner. Ironically, it sort of came out, and Trent Diffa alluded to this, uh, that the Clemson quarterbacks, and now you see with the kid that's up there, the DJ Ugalele guy, it's just, it shows you how special Deshaun Watson really was because there's a lot of things that Trevor does that remind you of Marcus Mariota. When Mariota played at Oregon and when uh, he was at Clemson, Guys were wide open. Well, now open in the NFL, it's not Clemson or Oregon open. It's right. You got to anticipate and make that throw. So those are the things that kind of shocked you that he wasn't as polished as you thought. But he kind of reminds me, I'm going to date myself a little bit, of Troy Aikman in 1989. The lessons that he learned by getting smacked around, he never buckled. So you know he has the inner toughness inside of him. And you've seen him, you saw him try to will the team to victory. So the stats don't really tell the whole story with Trevor. If you saw it with your own eyes, you'd be very impressed with who he is. Well, and they're doing everything they can to help him, right? I mean, that's got to be the job number one. How do you think that it's it's gotten off to the point? And how much is Doug Peters driving? Is it cohabitation with Trent Balky, or is it this about building for Trevor and Doug's the guy? Yeah, Doug has had an impact. Christian Kirk mentioned it today. Christian Kirk mentioned Doug Peters' name four times as why he came here, you know, that Lombardi trophy carries some weight, you know, and Croc, you know, this just from a player's perspective, when a guy has won and everyone has saw him win on a big stage, he has a certain cachet that other guys don't, especially a guy like urban who never coached in the NFL. But I'm going to tell you where they really helped him at Doug Peterson, former NFL quarterback, head coach, Jim Bob Cooter, uh, Mike McCoy, Mike McCoy is the quarterback's coach, Jim Bob Cooter, is one of the uh, offensive assistants. And they also have one more, uh, the guy that was with him in, in uh, Press Taylor. Press Taylor, who's been with uh, Doug Peterson in Philly. 
and is a protege. That's four guys that have a background in quarterback coaching. Three of them have been head coaches in the NFL. You got Mike McCoy, a former NFL coach, who's just a position coach. So that tells me that what he's going to do is be the mechanics guy. He's going to be like, nope, nope, nope. He's going to be the guy in the room. He's going to ride him. To me, that's a lot of support when you have four guys in that building that have coached quarterbacks at this level. And, you know, if you were, you know, to watch Trevor Lawrence's rookie year and sum it all up and say, hey, you know, these are the next steps that he needs to take, what would that be? And I know, you know, before we get going on that, I know this was a less than ideal situation with Urban Meyer coming in, having to fire him, the, the receiver position. Clearly, they look to upgrade that. We'll talk about that in the next segment. But, you know, having, I think one game I watched and it was like Tavon Austin had to be the guy. And I'm like, ah. That's not as ideal. So what areas do you think within everything that was going on where you feel like, you know what, he needs to improve here? The first thing is just to focus on football. He was the he was basically the press secretary. Anytime something went wrong, whether it was with Urban, uh, everyone around here knew that fans would listen to Trevor. So it's almost as if they were putting him out there to calm the natives. When really as a rookie quarterback, Crockin, you know, and both of you guys know in this league, it's hard no matter how talented you are. He's going to finally have a chance to just do football stuff and concentrate on the playbook, concentrate on the system, concentrate on his mechanics, concentrate on working on his muscle memory so he can start trusting the system and then just play within the system and not have to be a hero, not have to come out and worry about press conferences, not have to worry about motivating other people, not have to worry about going up to Urban Meyer and putting his arm around him on the bench saying coach is going to be all right. That's a lot for a 21-year-old. Yeah. They're going to buffer him and allow him to grow up the way he should grow up in football. Nice. I hear that. And when we come back, we're definitely going to talk about some of the things that they did in free agency to improve around the young quarterback, on top of adding a new coach. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about Bet Online. It's that time of the year as college basketball tournament has finally begun, and there's already been some upsets. All right. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs. All right. Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and the news this season. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Tony, do you got a favorite Vegas casino game that you like playing? Uh, the roulette. Ru ah, so that's mine too. See, Ryan yeah. said he's not really a roulette guy, but I'm I'm definitely a roulette guy. Well, they got that as well. So head over right now to the website or go use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action going on over there. It's Bet Online, where the game starts. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day and make sure that you are following the Locked On the NFL. All right, they got Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes and it's free and available wherever you get your podcast. All right, Tony, we're putting you back on the spot here. And, you know, I had some pushback on some of the moves that the Jacksonville Jaguars made in free agency, loading up and spending all that money on receivers. And I get it. It's like, hey, pass catchers, they need that. But they gave Christian Kirk a contract where he can earn up to $84 million. Uh, you, you went and gave Zay Jones uh, three years, $30 million. He had the funny haircut today at the press conference. That was interesting. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, obviously going to get a tight end, Evan Ingram. And I, I kind of like that move. I know Ryan has touched on liking that as well. But do you feel like they've done enough to really help kind of protect uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence. And I know they locked up the left tackle, but do you think now they put him in a situation to where all right, he could relax and be the best version of himself? I think it's a start. And the reason why I say that is because last year they were extremely frugal. And I got a little bit of conspiracy theory about that when Trent Baalke was advising Urban Meyer to not even buy a tight end in John New Smith. And all of a sudden Urban gets fired and now Trent is out there like a scammer with somebody else's credit card and he's spending money all over the place. So the thing is, is did you try to get that man fired and now you're going to spend? Because I know somewhere Urban's like, well, he told me I couldn't do that. So um, I think considering what they could do, because a lot of teams locked up their players and the market really dried up and they happen to have a lot of money in a year where there's not a lot of stuff on the shelf. Christian Kirk was the best slot receiver available the guy caught 70 some odd balls for i think 988 yards and he's fast the jaguars don't have enough functional speed like you said they tried with philip dorsett and they tried with the johnson kid that got let go in in, in with the chargers 
and they kept trying to just find guys who were track stars instead of trying find trying to find guys who were good football players. And I reminded folks around here, the top two receivers in the league, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, they run four, five, four, six. So we fall in love with with so much with speed that we just seem to forget you have to be a functionally good football player. But with Kirk, it's it's basically a two-year $37 million contract. So the way you look at it is this. Had they tagged, used the franchise tag on, say, DJ Chark, that would have been $18 million. You tag him next year, it's $18 million again. They gave Christian Kirk DJ Chark's guarantee for two years. They can cut him with the way that this is structured. They can let him go after two years, and it won't, it'll be a $5 million dead cap space on the cap. So that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Zay Jones shocked me a little bit because the one I was looking forward to was Cedric Wilson. Cedric Wilson went for a lower number to Miami, and he's a proven inside and outside guy at 6'2". But somebody down there likes Zay Jones a lot more than I did, so I didn't really knock on that too much. Evan Ingram, if he stays healthy, is a dangerous pass catcher. In his worst season, he's caught 44 balls. That's more than any Jaguar has caught uh, except one guy. I think Mercedes Lewis did it one time in the last 15 years. So the tight end position, especially with Doug Peterson, where he had Zach Ertz and Gal- Dallas Goddard, you know what I'm saying, where he had two guys. They do it in Philly. They do it in Baltimore. They have multiple tight ends. I think it's going to be a priority for them. So Evan also gives him a red zone target because he can he can high point the ball, whereas Christian and Zay are smaller receivers. I still, though, think that they're going to do something in the draft. I know y'all are going to get to that, but I know that somebody both of y'all like that's probably going to be sitting at the top of the second round in the Jaguars or within reach because they have the 33rd pick. It'll be in reach for them to go up and get him. Uh, that's Christian Watson, and I know y'all will hit that in, in a little bit. But you can always address that X. I don't think they have a true X receiver on the outside, but this is a start, and I think you had to help Trevor with guys who could separate. It's a good year to need an X, too. But my question comes back to they have that number one, and I don't I don't think they're going to find a trade partner. No. Like locking up what you've done in the offensive line, that's all well and good, but normally you would do that to get out of that first pick. So they're stuck with it. You don't need a quarterback. Do you think that offensive line is off the table, or do you think that they – it's it's a one-year, right, on your left tackle, so do you go and draft another one to become the heir? Do you knock him inside? Do you just build depth, or do you go at some kind of weapon? What's I would have. I would have because I'm not as high on Cam Robinson. They said – Trent Balky said yesterday they're working on an extension, so they want to keep him. And I will tell you this. I was at practice last year, and Dave Campbell, a former NFL head coach, was standing next to me, and he looked at Cam Robinson. Dave Campbell was in Dallas. Dave said that is a specimen and that's the kind of guy that looking at him he looks like one of those guys we had under Jimmy so (laughs) when you think about that that's what these coaches do and they think that maybe he's been the benefit of some poor coaching they're going to try to work with him they're going to work with walk a little they're going to work with uh Jawan Taylor and go with Brandon Scherf and uh they have two third round picks I don't think I, I do believe this they have Josh Allen at one edge the thing is, is had they signed a, a true left tackle or had they signed Chandler Jones, it would have been a tell because now you're stuck. If you sign Teron Armstead and Chandler Jones, who do you take number one? You can't take a tackle and you can't take an edge rusher. But I heard two months ago they want Aiden Hutchinson. So when you think about it, a lot of what they've done is around that. They haven't touched the edge spot. They need another guy on the outside. I don't, I don't have Hutchinson that high like they do, but I think he's their guy. Real quick, I do want to, you know, you kind of slept on my guy, Julius Thomas, played tight end for the Jaguars for a couple of years. I, I didn't yeah. want to bring him up. You know why? Hey, because they I can't know. stand him around here, man. They oh, say Julius man. came in here and stole money. He did steal some money. He also, you know, 46 catches in one year. I went to high school with him, so that's my homie. Okay, you know? yeah. He's, Jay, he's a good uh, dude, though. He's a little homie. He's a year younger than me. But uh, shout out to my guy, Julius Thomas. But anyways, you start to touch on the draft, and we are definitely going to get more in-depth with the draft plans of the Jacksonville Jaguars when we, Jaguars when we get back. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about Built Bar, all right? And at this time of the year, we're all the way in March now, so a lot of people have given up on their New Year's resolutions. But if you need any help and you're someone like me that likes to snack a lot, Built Bar, that's the thing for you, especially when it comes to the puffs. And if you have not tried the puffs, I'm telling you, you're missing out best tasting Built Bar that they have out there. The puffs are their first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They are fluffy. They are marshmallowy. And they're not just a protein bar. They are a treat. And they are covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs, they're a fan favorite. 
and they have some incredible flavors. Yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, all really, really good. And I bet they're going to be some of your new favorites as well. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. And yes, that includes the Built Bars are as well, 100% real chocolate. They are low in calorie, high in protein, and you can replace that with any candy bar. They are better than that. I, I love Reese's Peanut Butters cups, all right? I can eat those all day, but I threw them out, and I said, you know what? I'm replacing the Reese's peanut butter with Built Bar Puffs, all right? A typical, typical candy bar can be anywhere, you know, from two to 300 calories. That ain't good for you. Go to Built.com right now and scroll down to the macros chart if you're into that, all right? You'll be blown away by what you see. High in protein, low in calorie, high in fiber, low in carbs, all right? The most uh, Built Bars, they contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and best part about it, 17 grams of protein compare that to a candy bar which usually has about 240 calories 30 grams of sugar dozen of net carbs and no protein come on man it's a no-brainer here mint brownie coconut coconut almond and new flavors all the time including white chocolate cookies and cream they are all delicious and they always come out with new flavors and if you think of a flavor that you might like man they might make it and if they do it'll be good all right a built bar they worry about the taste first they want it to taste delicious that's why eric crocker loves it all right, because it tastes so good, and they'll figure out afterwards how to make it healthy. And I don't know how they do it, but they do it every time. All right, they don't miss. All right, so if you want in on this amazing offer, go to build.com right now, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at build.com. All right, Tony, now Bro, we're, we're, we're getting. I can see them. There's peanut butter cups under that Niners hat right there. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I know. Let me. Let me hide that. Let me hide those real quick. Uh, <laughs> we started to get into the draft, and I know that's what everyone's here for. They're probably like, fast forward to the part where you talk about the draft and the Jags. Obviously, we're talking to Tony Wiggins right now, again, host of the Locked On and the uh, Jaguar show. But they got the number one overall pick. So you're on the clock. Who are you taking? I would take Evan Neal. Uh, I heard uh, through the grapevine that – if there was a tackle, they like the kid, Iguanu, uh, I believe that's how you say his name, up at NC State. Now. Ryan likes him. Uh, Ryan likes a, him. A, a Ryan, little is, Ryan has a, mocked him number one to y'all. So. Right. A little birdie has told me told me a couple of months ago, and this is a bird that was in the building. Uh, he was on the old staff. Uh, let me correct that. He told someone to tell me. I'll quote him. He <laughs> said, tell your boy Wig if the draft was today, they take Aiden Hutchinson. Mm. And... Um, I actually talked to some Detroit Lions staff members down that used to be here in Jacksonville. And I was like, I know y'all want your boy, but I was joking with them saying, y'all better come get him. I heard they like Aiden. And uh, I saw the look on their face. So, you know, they probably love him because he's a homegrown kid. I wasn't as high on him as everyone else when I thought he was 6'4". When he was 6'7", running the same three cone as Odell, I started thinking like, okay, he's 6'7". That's a little bit different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's going to win the interview process. I'm still a Kayvon Thibodeau guy. I think Kayvon Thibodeau, by the way, is getting the Michael Parsons treatment like, oh, y'all forgot. Okay, I think when he gets to the NFL, he's going to be that dude that's been the dude since he got off the bus when he was in the fifth grade. He's always been the best player, and I think that's what's going to happen with him too. But I always tell people to think about the draft. The draft is about prospect. Prospect is the likelihood that something is going to happen. So the likelihood that something is going to happen is – Aiden Hutchinson checks off all the boxes and you don't have to worry about him. And I think that's what the Jags are going to do. Well, I know Makes Ryan was really me. high on the equity. So you want to give him kind of your take on why you think that's such a good fit for the Jaguars if they choose to draft him there or maybe even trade back a little bit and potentially draft him at a uh, different spot? Versatility. He can play right tackle or left tackle. And in the NFL these days, now that, they don't really use the big end anymore, the, the 5B or the 4B. Everybody's a pass rusher. If you don't believe me, Von Miller was rushing on one side and, and Leonard Floyd was on the other. So you see what's going on in Oakland right now with Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. So it's like you don't have to just worry about the one guy pass rushing on one side and then the other guy just being some sort of set the edge dude. So right tackle and left tackle have equal value right now. So – uh, if they did take him, it would show up their line and say, look, this kid that if Cam Robinson doesn't want to extend, this is the second year getting a franchise tag, we know we got a left tackle. But the thing is what you have is you just have an athletic football player who's going to be good. And when you have the first pick, 
and when you've won four games in two years. This is what I told people. Outside of another quarterback, you can't afford to cherry pick. You take the guy that you think is going to end up in Canton. That's what you do. You have first dibs, first choice, and it's not like if you don't fill a square, you're going to get voted off the island and your team is going to go away. This isn't win this year or else. This is build your team for the future. You get Trevor Lawrence and then another guy, whether it's Neil or whether it's Iguana, whoever, if he's Walter Jones, you're set for the next decade. So the way you look at it when you're picking number one is don't cherry pick positions. Take the absolute best player regardless of position and just understand that two or three years down the road when you keep doing that, it's going to work itself out. Well, we know that the draft isn't just one round and it's not just one right. pick. The Jacksonville Jaguars also have three selections on day two. So you talked about potentially drafting a receiver there at pick 33. If it was up to you, would it be Christian Watson out of North Dakota State? It would be him or George Pickens. And the reason why hmm. I say that is because it gives them, when you look at the way that their receiver room is constructed now, it gives them that pure X receiver on the outside, that guy that you can really develop. And a lot of these dudes were mentioning, whether it's Cup, whether it's Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson. In fact, the Jaguars chose Allen Robinson. Look what they did. They chose Marquise Lee, then Devontae Adams went, and then they chose Allen Robinson. So they did this before where you some of the best receivers in the league are guys that made it right to the top of the second round. And I think the two guys that I just mentioned have a chance to be a T. Higgins type with their body type. And Watson even has a ceiling higher than that because of his speed and his, and his measurable. So I think that's a good spot. When you look at the draft board, the one thing that scares me, this is the one thing that scares me about the draft board. Daxton Hill, I think, is a first-round pick, but every mock that I've seen and that and I've done myself, he keeps ending up there. And sometimes when I say take the best player, Daxton Hill is a very good football player, and they yeah. might go, man, we might be able to get Jalen Tolbert in the third round. We can't pass him up because he's just that good. So I get worried sometimes if a guy falls to them and a guy who's not supposed to be there is just sitting there, boy, Mafe. Like if they don't go with the pass rusher, if there's a guy sitting there that they can't get past, they might pass up wide receiver and then look for wide receiver a little bit later. Do you like the depth down there, though? Do you, do you have anyone else that you think not necessarily X, maybe somebody can move around a little bit more like uh, like Pierce, any anybody that you think can do, do multiple roles that you might have to wait on? Uh, well, the guy that they want to do multiple roles is, is Kirk because they've said he's a slot, but they paid him also. They said he can play outside. So if, if they rolled out there today, he'd be their number one. Marvin Jones Sr. would be uh, the, the veteran in the room, the guy that raises the floor, but he doesn't separate. He might be helped by having other guys who can separate. And then with Zay Jones, with that group alone, I don't think that's enough. But like I said, you can't fill every square in year one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised that if they moved up and took Jamison Williams, if they package 33 mm -hmm. with 65 and come up, if he's still sitting there at 21 or 22 because of the ACL, I wouldn't be surprised if they moved up and said, you know what? That's just a move for the future. But at some point they got to get a guy like that. Uh, second pick in the third round. What are you thinking? I heard you talk a little bit about maybe not taking a receiver at pick 33, maybe wait to the second round. The Jaguars have two picks there. Jalen Tolbert, uh, maybe is that a guy kind of in that range you think might be there? Is there anyone else you have in mind or a different position? Yeah, different position, and I'll explain why. When they signed, uh, when they signed Foy Aluakon to a three-year, forty-five million dollars to man and be the off-ball linebacker, I started thinking the defensive coordinator Mike Caldwell came from Tampa. He was the linebackers coach, so he had Devin White, and then he had, of course, Levante David, a future Hall of Famer, in my opinion. So. Mafe, I mean, uh, Foy is going to be, I thought he was going to be there, Devin White. They released Miles Jack, who got picked up by Pittsburgh. So Foy is going to be the off-ball linebacker. Uh, Damian Wilson, who they had last year, signed with someone else today. Unless they're going to go with Shaq Quarterman, the third-year player out of Miami, who was a fourth-round pick, who they said they liked. I'm looking at Chad Muma and Brian Osamoa at the top of the third round as that linebacker and nicobe dean is somebody else that you want to watch at 33 they went their whole team went up to the georgia workout so you have to make sure that you fortify positions and right there according to these depth charts and according to these boards there might be a mike linebacker or an off the ball linebacker who could play that same role 
uh, that Mike Caldwell has used. And, you know, he's going to stand on the table for his old position as the defensive coordinator. He might want a young quarterback, somebody to groom in his own. Uh, you, you get those guys that can flow sideline. Mm -hmm. I think Chad Moomin and Brian Arsimo are the two guys that I think and there's a kid from LSU, too. I can't remember his name, but I think those are the guys that you might have to Clark. look for at the, at the top of that third round. And Clark's the other guy. I like his game as well. He can come downhill in a hurry. Yep, for sure. And both of their running backs are coming off injury. At the end of the year, James Robinson, this was considered a position of, de of depth and strength. James Robinson tore his Achilles. Unless he's Cam Akers, it might take him a little longer. And then uh, the Liz Frank injury to, Cliff, uh, to Travis Etienne, and even with those two guys, they still don't have a power back. So if one of those guys, if if the Spiller kid from Texas A&M is sitting there and you know how Peterson rolled when he was when he was in Philly, he had different running backs for different things. And whether it was Clements or whether it was LeGarrette Blunt, you know, he had three guys. They don't have a power back right now. So I wouldn't be surprised, too, if a Damian Pierce or somebody that could get him a one yard run, especially when both of your running backs are coming in from season ending injuries. That's not a good way to open camp. They might go get a young guy. They didn't pay anybody in free agency. Man. Let's be clear though. ATN is a running back again, right? <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah. He's not an offensive weapon. He's back at running back, right? Where he should have been all along. Okay. Just I'm check excited it. to see him. I'm excited <laughs> to see him kind of get out there and see how to utilize him and much more. Hey man, we got to put a little bit more respect on my guy, Julius Thomas name, but uh, we do. I forgot about JT. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about JT. Yeah. But, man, Tony, really appreciate you coming on. Again, if y'all haven't already, go ahead and check out the Locked On NFL Jag show with our guy Tony Wiggins. comes at you five days a week. Tune into that, man, so you can learn more about what's going on with the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right. right. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On NFL Draft. For myself, Ryan Tracy, Tony Wiggins, when Ryan and I come back, it'll be Monday with a new mock draft specifically for y'all. And maybe we'll take – who Tony picked for the Jacksonville Jaguars and move forward. But that's going to do it. See y'all Monday. Peace.